Alright, how's it going? So, this is my twin cylinder Suffolk engine. I am um, uh, about six months ago I promised a bloke I would make a video for the inside of it. And I suppose this is eventually getting around to it. So, um, yeah, I'll run through a few things. So the blocks are welded together. Um, I think I did this with just a MIG welder and just tapped it with a hammer a lot. Make sure you keep the heat down sort of thing, just tap it, tap it, tap it as you're welding. Um, and that seemed to work, it hasn't cracked yet, hasn't fallen apart. Um, to machine the edges down, to get the blocks to come up close, um, I did it on a lathe, so I didn't have a mill. So see in there where you've got the big, big hole where this end plate sits on, I put that on the chuck, put the jaws in there and spread them out. Oh, point the camera. Put them in there and then turned off the front of the engine just on a very low speed I think it was 80, 80 rpm or so and um, that seemed to work, had to be patient but yeah it got there in the end um, the other block was a bit more difficult because you had to do it from the other end so what did I do there oh yeah I started off the same but only turned down this little this little bit of casting that sticks out here turned that down a bit so that I could spin the engine round in the chuck then put the chuck on there and do it up as tight as I possibly could and then carefully turn turn the lip off because there's a lip just in there he's not flat of course so you've got to turn that back until he's flat, dead flat and then they'll sit up against each other flush there and yeah that seemed to work not too much drama um, the crankshafts uh, the one, this this back one here I put the was it crankshaft and lathe and turned off that gear that's there and brought it right back to I don't know what the measurement is there, 15 mil or so and then made up a spacer to go in between I think it's about 35 mil by probably nearly 35 mil long with whatever the hole is that's the hole, three quarter ish and that seemed to work and he's not even welded all the way around that one I was a bit worried about bending it, but it's still bent. Anyhow, um, yeah, the pistons go up and down together rather than opposing pistons. So I thought, well, one engine's balanced, so two engines should be just as balanced as the first one, sort of thing. Which it doesn't seem too bad. I mean, it it walks around on the ground a bit, like you see in the other video, but oh, no, it doesn't. That's not too bad. And it's the the firing pattern is a lot better then you can you can run it better with one carburetor if you're running the pistons up and down together if you're running them opposingly it goes suck suck miss miss on the carburetor so it'll be a bit unbalanced you'll get a better more power in one piston than you will in the other sort of thing so no this worked out quite well oh yeah and that's a Honda carburetor codged on there because I couldn't get the jet out of the Suffolk to clean it the bloody thing was stuck in there so Yes, good old. Well, it's not a Honda one, I think it's like a Chinese rip-off, but yes, works wonders. Oh yeah, and the camshaft is the same sort of job, just a little collar welded on there. Is he welded all the way around? Yeah, he's welded, welded all the way around and then ground off right there so that it wouldn't interfere with the, what should we call it, cam follower. But no, it works pretty well. Rev the nuts off of it when they're still here. Um, what am I going to do? Oh yes, so I'm just going to take the big ends off and see what them bearings are like. But it doesn't seem too bad. I'll show you. Okay. So, oh, rubbish. So it doesn't look too bad. Um, what have we got? A bit on the edges. I don't think it does a lot there. The domain of it's alright. That's alright, that one's not too bad, that one's even better. Yeah, be alright. Yeah, alright. Yeah. The um when I put it together, the um this end here. Oh, bollocks! Sorry. This end here. This bearing was a little bit tight, 
when you when you fully bolted down the end plate, it's um it pinched the bearing a little bit. But um I got a bit of sandpaper, sanded the bushing away a bit until it was until it was just enough run sort of thing. And then rev the knackers off of it. Oh no, I've tipped them out. But I mean it seems to be alright. Seems to be. Oh yes. Um spark plugs, yes. So there's another chap, um what's his name? Deep fried fuzzball. And he managed to use one coil pack to run the two plugs. And from what I can see, what he does is finds the other end of the coil that is, doesn't go to the spark plug, finds the other end of it, disconnects it from the earth, um, and connects it up to another HT lead and puts it to the other spark plug. So that each, so that when the coil induces a spark, to get it to spark, it has to jump through both plugs. It doesn't have a choice. Um, and I tried and I failed. So I had to do the old mechanical way of a distributor. So this has got yeah one one coil, the original coil, the original points. Nothing in there has changed. Um, the wire comes along here, goes into my homemade distributor. Oh yes, silicon there covering it up. And what there is, is there's this plastic plate here, sprayed red. That's a bit of acrylic, I think. Um, and that just covers a hole inside of the block. It's directly over the camshaft gear there. So, the camshaft gear is, a hun is what is it, spins half the speed of that one. So, we can use that for our timing. So, behind this silicon, there are three brass set screws that go through there. I don't know if you can see them in there. Oh yeah, just about. Sharpen to a bit of a point. Um, the one in the middle comes from the coil pack and the two outer ones you see there go to one of the spark plugs. Um, and on the gear there, if you can see it, just and just see it there, there's a bit of brass with a bit of plastic in between it and the gear and they're all JB welded together um, one bit of brass, there's one on each side, one bit of brass is closer to us and one is closer to the middle of the gear so that they'll line up with one of these pins, I just I see it there, look, yeah so yeah, when he's ready to fire he lines up those two pins for one plug and 180 degrees as he does it for the other one, which seems to work. Um, he does get a bit shirty sometimes, so you rev it up some more and he has it. But um, yeah, no, that seemed to work. What else is there? Oh yeah, there was a hole. It was an oil way when I machined that away that collected the oil from this bearing, so it leaks there. So electrical tape is good. And that works. Exhaust. What is the exhaust? Oh, yeah, the exhaust is um, half-inch water pipe fittings. That's just an elbow there. Uh, female each end. Um, and then a little, a little piece in there. One of them, that piece screws into the block there, and then screws into this bend. And then on the other side of the exhaust, there's another one of these couplings with double-threaded coupling. Um, but I welded a nut on top and put that bolt, that bolt there. And there's a copper washer in between that washer and a copper washer there as well. And that seems to work away. Right. Doesn't do much silencing, but um, yeah. So there you have it. This is a um, a test piece for another one. So. Um, that's why I'm revving the tits off of this one. I don't really mind it too much. But, um, I might chuck it on a mower, see if it works, see if it cuts grass. I don't know, I always leave my grass too long. Don't. Anyway, there you go.